Sean, you were a part of this game for eight years, and then obviously you were away from this game for 13 years. What have you missed, missed about it? <laughs> um, well, first of all, it's, it's a game like uh, no other that I've, I've been a part of. Um, you know, rivalries, UCLA, Arizona, or Arizona State, Arizona. You know, being in different different games, but you know, I think some of it is just the lack of conference affiliation. You know, we, we play each other one time a year, not twice or three times. Um, you know, the games either away or home it has more of a, a college football bowl game uh, feel to it. Uh, it means a lot to the city. It means a lot to uh, people that attended both the University of Cincinnati and obviously Xavier. So there's so much pride. Uh, that's at stake. It's hard to duplicate that feeling with another another matchup or series, certainly that that I've been a part of. So, uh, what I've missed, you know, I, I don't know what I've missed. It's it's a difficult task. Uh, I think uh, you know you you want to win the game, but you also want to be very responsible. You know, you want to be ready for the game. You want your your team to play well, play with a lot of energy, and uh, I think in some ways that that becomes our responsibility as as the coach. And, uh, and a member of the team. I know what your schedule is like, and I'd imagine that when you were at Arizona, it was probably hard to keep tabs on this. But did you were you curious about this result when you were away? Was this a game that you tried to watch, if you could? Yeah, for sure. Sometimes I was able to watch, sometimes not. But I, I always followed it because uh, you know I've always had a special place in my heart for Xavier. And you know, once you're a part of the Crosstown Shootout as a player, a coach, and even a fan, I think you're aware that it's a big game. How do you explain to, to new guys like Sule and Dez and, Ga and Cam what this game means, what it's all about? You try your best. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's about downplaying it, it, that it's another game because it isn't. It's a really big one. Uh, it's very meaningful, like I just mentioned. And uh, you know you try to have the, your practices and your preparation, you know, reflect that that this is uh, this is very very meaningful. That everything we do is is very important, uh, and in particular uh, as we approach you know closer to to Saturday. But I will say, not until uh, a players in the game do do they realize, you know, I think the intensity of it and what what we describe to them. You know, and in our case. It's also our first uh, true road game. You know, we've we've been obviously in Portland, where we played away from home in a different time zone against three quality programs. But there's nothing like going to an away court. So not only is this the crosstown shootout, it's also our first road game. So in Cam and Dez's case, you you try to explain to them what it's like in college to go and play away from home, where you only have each other and you have the crowd against you. So. I think uh, we're going to kill two birds with one stone here on Saturday. But it, it all comes back to how ready you are, how hard you work to be ready, and that is our responsibility. It's a rivalry game. So as you said, everything is kind of amplified. All the, all the little things become more important, um, particularly when you're on the road. But what stands out in this game as what might end up deciding it? Like what's really important? in terms of how this one's going to play out? Well, I think it starts on offense for us, and that is just uh, to make sure that we do as good of a job as we can of valuing and taking care of the ball. In other words, limiting our turnovers. Uh, a bad shot taken at the wrong time by the wrong player is like a turnover. So, you know, when you're shooting the ball, shot selection, being able to play long stretches without turning the ball over, I really believe this in every road game, especially against good teams. You know, that's that's the starting point because if you're able to do that well and limit turnovers, the transition opportunities for the home team, there aren't as many. And I think that's what we want to do. Uh, and I think just watching UC, they have a lot of firepower. They have a lot of firepower on the court at the same time from the three-point line. Uh, they can shoot them from four spots. And when you play a team like that, they're really dangerous in transition. So back to my first point, the more open court transition opportunities that they get where they can find each other and you know, have multiple players be able to shoot, pass, dribble, 
uh, that that to me plays to their strength. So, you know, I think getting back transition defense, valuing the ball, shot selection, which is kind of tied to that transition defense, you know, that's really important for us. Uh, in some cases, playing against a good team away from home, that's always the case. And then the second thing in this is something that we've been hot and cold with better recently, still have a, a long ways to go to be good at it, and that's rebounding. Being able to create our own shots, second shots, being able to keep them off of uh, off the offensive glass, I think they do a really good job of uh, creating second shot opportunities, you know, and that leads to three point open threes. We've in essence lost in my mind two games this year where you can look at one area and say, if we would have done a better job of getting long rebounds or blocking out and keeping them off the offensive glass in a couple key areas, we might have left with a win, you know, and uh, that's Indiana and that's Gonzaga. And not that that didn't happen in other games too, but in particular, those two tough, very close losses. So, you know, playing on an away court against a hungry team, a team I think that takes a lot of pride in that area, we have to be able to rebound. Guards, bigs, it isn't just Jack Nungy and Zach Fremantle. It's Sule Boom and Adam Kunkel. It's, it's the guys that don't start the game. But we have to really compete, enter the fight, so to speak, and make it sure that we are physical and we block out and can keep them off the glass. So I think those are our two areas. Uh, I wouldn't say areas of concern, but just two areas that we have to do a good job in to win the game. So. Um, we're talking about it. We're working on it. We'll see. You mentioned UC's three-point shooting. I think they average around 25 attempts a game. It's a huge part of what they want to do offensively. What, what needs to happen on Saturday for your perimeter defense for that not to be a strength for them? Well, we have to keep improving in all areas regarding that. That is our Achilles heel outside of our defensive rebounding. If you looked at us three weeks ago, um, we're moving in the right direction in terms of being able to rebound better. Again, not where we would like to be, especially with the team that we have, but we are better. We've made improvements. On the three-point defense, we've not made improvements. You know, even the last game, we went in down seven points to West Virginia. You know, at the half, they were seven for eight from three. So in this game, if we don't defend the three-point line, it's not going to go well for us. Uh, so we have to be able to do it at four positions. You know, looking at them, you know, DeJulius, Nolly, and Davenport, they take the lion's share of their threes. You know, uh, obviously Nolly has had a game uh, against Arizona and Maui where he made nine. You know, if you make nine threes in a college game, you're, you're a heck of a three-point shooter. And you look at his percentage, he's shooting 43% from the three-point line which is a heck of a percentage, especially where we are in our season now. Uh, so those three guys in particular, not that the other guys can't do it, but the lion's share of the damage comes from those three and matchups being aware. And like I mentioned earlier, transition defense and uh, defensive rebounding do a good job in that area. Sometimes you can take away some, some open looks. What's it like to walk into an arena where essentially everyone is against you. Can that have a, almost a transformative effect on your team in that you're really, you're, you're in it and, and everyone else is against you? What's that like? No, it's, it's challenging. I mean, it is. You, you really only have each other. You know, you talk about it, but, you know, to your earlier question, how do you prepare for that? I think in some ways you just have to go through it. And that's why experienced players are so valuable in college basketball. Because if you think about it, even a guy like Sule Boom, Sule's new here to us, but he's played in his fair share of road road games. So he's been through that. Um, he's not as rattled. I, I think it, the poise and the confidence comes from experience. So, you know, they're very experienced on their end as well. Um, but, you know, we're going to rely on those guys that are on our team that have been through these challenging situations before. And we have quite a few of them. You know, playing on the road in the Big East, uh, you know, playing on the road in, in these types of environments, I think you re really try to rely on their leadership to help a couple players on your team that haven't been through it before.